You are listening to Phil Am Radio, KEST 1450 AM with Idol Brian at Kuya Andy. Tayo pa rin ay nababalik sa ating programa dito sa Phil Am Radio at uh, tayo po ay, uh, uh, of course, uh, nagpapaliwanag at uh, napag-uusapan ang tungkol po sa 40th anniversary ng Vietnam War. At uh, parte po yan ay uh, meron nakaroon po ng Operation Baby Lift noong uh, April 1975 kung saan ay isang po pong, uh, isa pong uh, part po ng history wherein uh, there were more than 2,000 children that were rescued from the war-torn country after uh, Saigon fell in 1975. About 1,500 of those children passed through the procedure before being adopted by American families and their legacies live on through the exhibit that marks the 40th anniversary of Operation Baby Lift and at the end of Vietnam War. Okay, and uh, of course, we, will, uh, we have a guest here uh, who is uh, one of the babies who were uh, airlifted from uh, Vietnam to here in uh, in the Bay Area, particularly at the Oakland Airport, and uh, let's uh, welcome uh, uh, Mike uh, Fraley. Mike, hello. Yes, hi, hi, Brian. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, welcome to Phil Am uh, Radio, uh, Mike, based here in San Francisco. And uh, uh, so, what uh, we have uh, told our listeners that there is an ongoing exhibit about the uh, Operation Baby Leaf that happened. Uh, Uh, 40 years ago, that was April 1975, and uh, you were one of uh, the thousand of uh, babies who were part of that uh, operation. And uh, uh, how are you now, uh, Mike? Uh, I'm great, Brian. Thank you for asking. And yes, I was one of the uh, 1,500 uh, children that that were processed through the Presidio back in April '75, and actually uh, our flight was the first one and uh, it was the Ed Daly flight World Airways flight that landed in Oakland and, mm-hmm. and we were the um, the first kids through the Presidio and I believe that I was like number 40 through there because I have a tag that says my name and and a number 40 on there so um, I'm assuming that that what that means and, uh, and how am i today uh, i'm great you're great, <laughs> great. good Thank good you. uh and uh you're now based in hawaii right yes yes i live uh in hawaii i've um moved over here about 15 years ago and i live on the uh, the island of hawaii or the big island and yes and okay let's go back to that time that april 1975 and how old were you that time uh, mike Um, I don't have an exact age of how old I was, but uh, we guessed that I was about nine years old when I uh, came to the U.S. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time, you uh, you uh, you didn't really uh, know what's going on. You know that you have to get out from uh, Vietnam. And uh, did they tell you that you were going to uh, the U.S.? Yes, um, that's an interesting question that you asked about uh, not knowing what we what were, was going on. And uh-huh. um, I w- was placed to my family, the Fraley's, and um, I was with placed a while, and um, I didn't understand what what took so long. But anyway, at the end of uh, the war in April, um, we were sleeping, and basically we're, we were. Uh, woken up and told that we were going to America in the middle of the, of the night, mm-hmm. and so that's uh, that's kind of when my my memory and recollection began was when they woke us up and uh, then they put us into um, uh, basically a daily's cargo plane with no seats or anything, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we um, made an eventful uh, mad dash uh, out of Vietnam in the middle of the night. And uh, uh, these are only the kids were only allowed to be airlifted, and uh, of course you were separated from your uh, from your parents, from your uh, relatives in Vietnam, and uh, uh, it was only uh, uh, the kids who were airlifted, right? Cor- correct. We um, we were the, the the people who helped me get to the U.S., which. Uh, 
um, the, the organization is not in existence right now, but mm-hmm. it's called uh, Friends of Children from Vietnam. And uh, it was headed by two ladies, um, uh, Sherry Clark and Cheryl Marks. And Sherry Clark lived in Vietnam, and she would basically go to the orphanages, and if the nuns asked her to pick up uh, children, babies that were uh, known as known orphans, um, she would pick us up and basically take her into her, her care and then find families for us uh, in the U.S. And in my case, I came from uh, Da Nang, Vietnam, which is in now in the middle of the of the country, but back then it was in the north of South Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And so I went from Da Nang down to Saigon, which is a long ways. And um, to answer your question, I believe pretty with pretty much certainty that at that time sherry believed that we were all orphans because that's what the information she had okay and um, of course when you uh, finally uh, met uh, your uh, your parents or your uh, the frailies here in the u.s how how was it like growing up as a vietnamese in an american family or in community um yeah it was uh, uh you know i, I remember actually seeing them at the airport and uh you know getting in the car and the car ride and they were you know mm-hmm. going really fast which in vietnam that we never really were able to go that fast because the roads were filled with so many potholes but um the fear uh, of that and then um growing up uh, in in the being vietnamese in the community where it was mostly um, Americans. anglo-americans uh-huh. um it was it was tough i mean it was uh, i'm not going to say it was easy but it it was tough but uh, i feel that with the support of my my adoptive family mm-hmm. um i was able to be um acclimate very well and i had i have great friends from high school but also i have uh, many you know emotional i guess we'll say emotional wounds from that time and it, like all things you know in life you learn to work through them but uh-huh. I, i would say that international adoption um is going to always be a tough situation because we're merging two cultures together yes. and um you know that drastically different cultures and and then i think being vietnamese at that time coming to america was very difficult because america was um you know still very wounded by the 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 war mm-hmm. and and the the outcome of the war and so being vietnamese american at that time i think in a rural community was probably more difficult than um let's say if i had been you know uh, i don't know from south america or whatever um uh so but it was difficult and but also like i said i had a, i have a very have a very supportive family and and uh group of friends and uh mike uh, what was the most uh, challenging uh, <coughs> challenging uh, uh task that you did at that time uh, or was there any uh problems that you encounter and how did you able to solve or overcome them uh, yeah the, um i would say the probably the most challenging thing that i experienced was uh starting school in third grade and not uh-huh. knowing how to speak english at all yes um i came here in april and basically started school in august so i had about three months to acclimate to the american culture the language um and uh, that was probably the most difficult thing um and how did i overcome it I think it honestly just persistence. I um, mm-hmm. I've been told I'm I'm rather uh, persistent and stubborn about things, but also I also had really a great teacher, a uh, great English um tutor who really dedicated herself to helping me learn English and I think that you know with that support system um uh, just that teacher her name's Ellen Wojcicki and I still actually write to her to this day to thank her for her help because she meant so much to me um we didn't have ESL back then you know so she yes. basically was the speech pathologist and uh, you know I uh, talking to you right now I could tell that uh, she did a good job of uh, teaching you English <laughs> oh, well, thank you, thank you. And, and, uh, uh, and I, I thank her. Like I said, I still write to her to this day. And, um, uh, you know, it, it's hard. I, I, I don't think she 
Um, maybe she does, but I don't know if she understands the, mm -hmm. the, the great gratitude or the immense gratitude that I have for what she did for me and, um, and the, you know, which, uh,